We've successfully implemented undo in a functional manner. We have no mutation and no global variables. Let's repeat the process now for the redo function. Just as a reminder how this works, I've updated this to have some debugging information. You can see at the start of the game, the current move is zero, and this increases by one each time someone moves. The game state is not an empty array, it has one entry, which is going to be the current board state, in this case, the initial game state. So the length of the game state is always going to be one greater than the current move. We only want to let them redo if there's a current uh, a move to redo to. So unless they've used the undo feature, they're not going to be able to use redo either, because obviously you cannot redo into the future. With this in mind, let's go ahead and write our test and get everything working. The first thing I'm going to do is head over to my test file and start writing my test. We're going to describe the redo function here. And much like undo, there's going to be two scenarios where they can and when they can't undo. So for example, if it is the last move, that means the final move of the game or the final move that's been played, we're not going to let them redo into the future. In this case, we're going to create a new variable and we're going to return that from redo. And this is going to take two arguments. The first is going to be count, so move count, and that's going to be the current count. So I'm actually going to rename that to current count, current count. And the second argument is going to be the number of moves that have been played. In this case, I'm going to call it total move count. And depending on what these are, we're going to, going to decide if they can or can't undo. Let's say it's the initial game state where the current count is going to be zero. Total move count is actually going to be one unintuitively. We're considering the very first game state to be a current a move as well. So it's going to have one entry in this array. So we probably could change this to be called something else, maybe total boards count or something like that. Now that we've got that, let's go ahead and write our assertion. I'm going to expect the result is going to be equal to the current count, which is going to be zero. We're not going to let them move into the future. Let's go ahead and copy this test and say it is not the last move. For example, maybe a, a move has already been played and they've used the undo feature. So let's say there's two boards. In that case, we'd like to let them move forward by one from current count of zero to current count of one. Let's go ahead now and import the redo function, save this off. Of course, it's going to fail because I haven't implemented redo yet. So let's go ahead and do that now. The first thing I'm going to do is export a new function called redo, and that's going to take our two arguments, which is going to be the current count and the total boards count. I believe I called it current count. So current count, there it is. And we're also going to have total boards count. And depending on those values, we're going to return the correct variable. We have no value references to view reactivity system, and we also have no global variables. So this is definitely a good start to our functional core. Let's do our check in here. We're going to see if the current count is greater than or equal to total boards count plus one. And if it is, we're going to return the current count as is by just saying return current count. In the case that this is not true, it means they must have used the undo feature and they've moved to a previous game state. We're going to return current count plus one. So they're going to move into the future. Let's save this off and see if everything is passing. And hopefully everything is going to pass. Apparently not, it looks like I've made a mistake somewhere along. The first thing I'm going to do is check my variable names. I think current count and total boards count is correct. And it looks like those are the correct names in here. Let's just review the function. This looks correct to me as well. So I must have some kind of incorrect logic up here. We're seeing if current count plus one actually is greater than the total boards count. That would be the correct logic. And if we save this one off, hopefully it's now going to pass and everything is now passing. So the implementation is now correct. The next thing we're going to do in the next lecture is take our functional core redo and undo functions and integrate those into the imperative shell, which is going to be down here inside of our, our view integration layer by replacing these with references to our functional core functions.